Hello, my name is Juan Manuel Bolivar. I am professor from the Complutense University of Madrid. I welcome you to a lecture, Introduction to Chemical Reaction Engineering from the basic module, Process Engineering. In this lecture, we are going to learn about the concept of chemical reaction engineering and why it is important for the design of the biocatalytic reactions. The chemical reaction engineering is the discipline of chemical engineering that uh, studies and optimizes chemical reaction, also biochemical reaction, and is helping us to design the reactor. The strategy of this uh, methodology is to identify the phenomena that are taking place into the reactor, to quantify those phenomena, and then to assist to optimize the biochemical transformation. If we focus into a reactor, we can difference between physical processes and biochemical processes. We're going to focus on the biochemical processes and then to identify that we have three fundamental tools that are going to help us to understand better our reaction. One, it is the geometry, second, the thermodynamics, and third is the kinetics. The stoichiometry is a fundamental tool of the chemical reaction engineering and it is uh, based on the conservation of the mass. We use uh, atomic uh, balance and it's helping us to identify which are the key components of the reaction, how many independent biochemical reactions we have into the system and to know the relative change between the components in the system. So with the stoichiometry, we can, at the end, to write the chemical equation and the chemical reaction that is explaining what is taking place in our reactor. Could be a simple case, like a simple reaction, A plus B to produce C. It could be a more complex case, like a cascade, like a different reaction in theory and reaction in parallel are taking place. The second fundamental tool of the chemical reaction engineering is the thermodynamics. The thermodynamics is giving us the possibility to identify certain restrictions in our biocatalytic system. First, we can know if the reaction is even possible or not, so it is spontaneous. We can identify the reaction is reversible or irreversible, and in the case that is reversible, we can quantify the equilibrium and then to quantify which is the maximum conversion we might get in our system. Also, we could calculate the heat of reactions and then to identify the potential needs of a temperature control. We can also uh, anticipate and calculate the solubility of substrate and products, but it's very important to define our reaction medium, and finally is going to help us to quantify the maximum concentration of different components in the different phases, what is very important when we have a multi-phase biocatalytic system. The third fundamental tool of the chemical reaction engineering is the applied kinetics. The kinetics focus on the velocity. So we are interested in quantify the reaction velocity of uh, our system. Reaction velocity implies a change of the number of moles of certain component. Here we have the component A from this simple reaction. So how fast is the component A consumed? So first derivative of the amount of moles of A per time divided by the stoichiometric coefficient, in this case, in these simple reactions, A moles of A are consumed, plus B moles of B are getting consumed to produce C moles of C and D moles of D. And this velocity is normally referred to a 
reference magnitude. This reference magnitude, we are going to see it in a few seconds in more detail. If we know the stoichiometric coefficient of our reactions, we can refer the relative modification of the moles of every component to another component by using the stoichiometric coefficient. Regarding the unit of reference that we use in our reaction, normally we have actually referred to the reaction volume. This is the most common expressions of velocity. So the velocity is a unit of moles divided by time and divided by volume. This uh, reaction volume of unit of reference is very useful in the case of homogeneous reactions that are very usual in biocatalytic systems. However, in uh, other cases, it's more interesting, uh, it's giving more information to use another unit of rec. For example, if we have a solid uh, catalyst and immobilized uh, enzyme, it could be more interesting to express the production or consumption of certain component per unit of time and per unit of the mass of the catalyst uh, used. If instead of the mass of the catalyst we use the surface area of a reactor of the catalyst will be the surface area as the relevant unit of reference and if we know the volume of the catalyst will be the volume, the reference uh, unit that it is used. So depending on the system, depending on the characteristics of the biocatalytic systems, it's very important to define a specific unit of reference. As I say, normally, by default, it's reaction volume because of the, the predominant homogeneous reactions in biocatalysis. The applied kinetics is aiming to quantify the velocity of the reaction. And the first step is actually identify which are the factors that are affecting that velocity. And this depends on the kind of reaction that we have. If we have an homogeneous reaction, we have only chemical phenomena, so we need to identify the factors that are influencing the chemical phenomena, step composition, so substrate, product concentration, pH, pressure, what is relevant when we have gases, temperature, and of course the catalyst concentration. But if we have an heterogeneous reaction, so where two or more than two phases are in contact, we have not just a chemical phenomenon involved, we have also a dynamic physical process involved, mass transfer process. So we don't need only to identify the factors affecting the uh, biochemical reaction, but also affecting these physical processes. So we need to know the phase equilibrium, mass transfer coefficient, and gradients of the subject of the product to understand this picture. At the end, the final goal of the applied kinetics is uh, to provide a kinetic model. The kinetic model is just an equation or the equations that does describing from a mathematical point of view the reaction velocity and the influence of all the variables relevant to the system. Normally, of course, in biocatalysis, we have the concentrations, we have temperature, we have pressure. If we have a gas, we have a pH. To uh, reach this uh, equation, we have to consider the features of our system, type of reaction, number of reactions, key components, influence of the concentrations, influence of temperature, and influence of the catalyst. To be able to, to build this kinetic model, this equation, so equation describing the reaction uh, velocity, we have like different possibilities. One approach is uh, mechanistic, that is useful in some cases with uh, with enzymes, it is if we know the elementary steps of the enzymatic mechanisms, we can then uh, build um, equations and uh, use this equation to try to explain the reaction velocity. If we don't know the elementary steps of the mechanisms, we will use the empirical approach. In this empirical approach, we propose an equation that we think 
could be useful to explain the experimental data. And then we are performing a fitting procedure. This uh, uh, fitting uh, procedure is going to uh, require to understand two different uh, concepts. One is the mathematical expression of the equation, independent if the origin is mechanistic or empirical, and the type of experimental data that we have. Regarding the mathematical expression, we can have a very simple potential uh, kinetic, where the reaction velocity is the result of multiplying a kinetic constant by the subject concentrations to uh, define a uh, power. Normally, this uh, exponent here is going to be 1 or 0. This is a simple kinetic useful in some cases with enzymes. However, and uh, more oftenly, the kinetics that is going to be useful with enzymes is the hyperbolic uh, um, term. This is the uh, geometry of the equation we have here. And uh, now we have a numerator with a kinetic constant that is multiplied to the substrate concentration. Normally, the exponent is 1. And we have a denominator where we have a constant uh, that is uh, assuming to the substrate concentration, normally to an exponent of 1. To be able to uh, fit this equation to the experimental data, we need to distinguish two kinds of experimental data. We can have directly the enzyme activity, the reaction velocity, versus the subject concentration. So we have a direct fitting of the data provided by the equation to the experimental data. Or we can have what is also very useful in biocatalysis data of concentrations of substrate and product over time. Here, what we have is will be the representation of how the substrate is consumed over time. So we will need to integrate the kinetic equations in order to fit to the experimental data to calculate the kinetic constants. So to build the kinetic model, we have two uh, uh, important parts that are in a very uh, uh, intense interplay. On one hand, it is experimental uh, design an implementation of the experiment. So we need to modify a certain variable like the substrate concentration, fixed concentration, other intensive variables like temperature or pH. We measure either velocities or either we measure the, the consumption of the substrate or production of the, the product over time. And mathematically, we are treating the data in order to understand if the equation that we have, either from mechanistic or empirical point of view is relevant to explain our data. With this, we finish this uh, introduction to the chemical reaction engineering, which is the basis for a further understanding of the enzyme kinetics. Thank you.